<laughs> you'll be glad that in the past couple of weeks, uh, Chapel and St. Giles have broken me. Uh, so send me back in one piece. Uh, <laughs> it's great uh, to be here and to come and share God's word with you this morning, but also start this journey with you. What an exciting journey it is, isn't it? As we're now looking forward to appointing a new vicar for you, uh, as well as understanding what uh, a rector and these two benefit, uh, parishes are going to do working together. But you will see me, I won't disappear off, uh, I'll, I'll be very much part of your church as we understand what the future looks like. So it would be great to get to know you. I will be around after the service to, to get to know you, to have a chat for you to get to know me. Feel free to ask me any questions as well. But uh, as Paul says, we come to worship God and to meet him in his word and in his communion. So let's now put our minds over to encountering him today. Thank you. Jesus calls us to work with him to build a world of peace and happiness. And he does that partly through his teachings in what are known as the Beatitudes. And that will be the theme of our service today, and Dan will be our preacher. My thanks to all those who are looking after us, um, ensuring that uh, the service is transmitted to our homes, and my thanks to Jana, who has put together again this lovely presentation for us to follow. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. So let us pray together. Lord God, we set this time apart for you by the presence of your Spirit. Fill our hearts, hear our prayers, speak to us and change us. Form us into the likeness of Jesus Christ, so that our lives may glorify you. Amen. And we open with this hymn of praise and thanks. Rejoice, the Lord is King.
confession. We've been out in the world, haven't we, all week? And our feet have got dirty. Our minds have been rubbing around with others around. And now we come into God's presence. We want to be holy in his presence. In baptism we died with Christ, so that as Christ was raised from the dead, we also may walk in newness of life. So let us receive new life in him as we confess our sins in penitence and in faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We gather our opening prayers together in this collect for the third Sunday before Lent. And we join in to say together, Eternal God, whose Son went among the crowds and brought healing with his touch, help us to show his love in your church as we gather together, and by our lives as they are transformed into the image of Christ our Lord. Amen. So please now be seated for our first Bible reading. This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who depends on flesh for his strength, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. He will be like a bush in the wastelands. He will not see prosperity when it comes. He will dwell in the parched places of the desert, in a salt land where nobody lives. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. He will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a, in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. The heart is deceitful among all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward a man according to his conduct, according to what his deeds deserve. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> he went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there, and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem and from the coast of Tyre and Sidon who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by evil spirits were cured, and the people all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and healing them all. Looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. 
Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven for that is how their fathers treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for that is how their fathers treated the false prophets. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, as we come to hear your word today, may you speak into our hearts and into our lives that which you want us to hear. Amen. Amen. So this is such a powerful uh, discourse, as we call it, uh, speech that Jesus is saying, that as I always say in, in my sermons, context is king. And the few words that are written down just before uh, what Paul read out about the blessings and woes is hugely important in this. Because it's when Jesus calls his 12 apostles, or chooses the 12 apostles. So Jesus is up on a mountain and of course he is praying at night to God. And when the morning came, he called the disciples to him. So there weren't just 12 at that point, there were many disciples, and he chose 12 disciples, representing at that time the 12 nations of Israel. If you were Jewish and in that crowd and, and seeing this, or one of the disciples, the many disciples, you would kind of understand what was going on. It's like uh, being in a, a playground when you were young and you wanted to play five a side, so you knew that you had ten. You ever do this when you go around and uh, wanted to play a game, you knew so many, and then you would go around trying to strategically get the right people who you wanted to play, and then you didn't want a nine, because that would be five versus four, and you didn't want eleven, because that's unfair, six versus five as well, and one too many. So you go around and choose who you want, and then you go off and you go off and tell them, we're going to play football now. So that number was significant. If we did it today, people could kind of work out what was happening. And those disciples, those early disciples who were around, hearing that 12 were called, probably went, you know, this, this harks back. But remember the Jewish people, they knew their history. I stand here with the Bible now in my hand, but they knew it from memory. They learned it by rote. They kind of got taught. Nothing was written down because Back then, they didn't have paper. They had papyrus or they had animal skin and it was really, really expensive. So only the rich had it. So all of these things were being written down from the Old Testament and the New Testament. And crowds would be gathered and, and read out. So when things happen, now, don't we call, we go and say, we're preaching on Sunday and we, we go home and we look into all these commentaries and we say, what do they mean? But back then, just that calling of the twelve would have been really significant to those people that were there. And so Jesus uh, calls the twelve and he goes down the mountain and stood on a level place. And, and you could even say uh, that's uh, harking back to Moses. When Moses came down the mountain with the Ten Commandments onto the flat to declare them to the people of Israel, the new law that was inscribed uh, by God, the commandments that they should follow. Around there were so many people from so many places. We're told from Jerusalem, from Judea, from the coastal regions around Tyre and Sidon had come to hear him and to be healed of their illnesses and whatever was there. Just to touch him because power was coming out from Jesus. 
And, and just as an aside, you know, we do all these things in church, don't we? And we, we put all these events on and people come. And like Jesus, they come to, to hear what he was saying and to be healed. But uh, it was really for him to speak into their lives. It's not a bad thing that we do all these things for our communities, but we must at the end speak the good word of God to them because that's the word that changes their lives. So many people came and many people were healed and many people came to hear what Jesus says. And his word not only is right for that time, but it also continues today because Jesus is changing everything uh, that was either said earlier on in what we now have as the Old Testament. And, and, and he always took it further, didn't he? We know in the Gospel of Matthew when he talks about the servant and the man, he takes what was said and he takes it further. And he, and he really challenges us. And at the time, the Jewish religion was of the outside. It was the outward acts that we do. And we can too easily do that today. We can come to the church on Sunday. We can, we can help out taking food parcels to people or making sure they're okay. And say, oh yes, I'm a Christian. But never once pray, never once read the Bible. Never once truly in our hearts forgive others. And what Jesus is saying is look at your heart. This is, he takes it further. Don't just show on the outside that you are a good Christian or a good Jew. But on the inside is your heart. Because God sees our hearts, doesn't he? And that's the challenge. That's the challenge for each of us. So he comes down and he heals all these people. And then with all this proud, and they're not just Jewish people, they're, they're Gentiles, and uh, Gentiles are the, the non-Jewish people, uh, like me and you, those who are outside of Israel, not the chosen ones of God. They're all coming to hear what this man says, all being healed. But then he looks at his disciples, now, all the people there, he looks at his disciples. And remember, the disciples are the ones who have left everything. They've left their livelihoods. They've left their families to follow him. Because they say this man is the Messiah. And so they left, literally, their, their, their dad in the fishing boat. And left the family business to follow this man. And Jesus comes to these blessings and woes. Blessed are you, but woe to you. Now this, again, they would have understood. Go back to Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy, the last book in the Pentateuch, the first five books of the, uh, the Old Testament, is a covenant between God and his people. It's a treaty. So way back when, when two nations were fighting against each other, when they would stop, they would make a treaty. And Deuteronomy is uh, what we think is a treaty between God and his people. And in there, you put the blessings and the woes, don't you? It's like you do it to each other. I do it to myself. If you do this, I'll give you ten pounds. But if you don't, you're banned from the computer for a week. That's a blessing, isn't it? Ten pounds, oh, that's great, yes. But woe to you, Jacob, if you do not do this, because I shall ban you from your computer for one week, saith Dan Beasley. <laughs> that's the blessings and the woes that they put in there to keep you on that straight and narrow. We're going to make this covenant, we're going to make this treaty. So Jesus is coming and reminding those 12 disciples representing the 12 nations, looking directly at them, blessed are you. Now there's talk of this because they're quite strong words for today. Uh, do they mean it spiritually? Is this a spiritual thing or is it a, a, a physical thing? Because he's talking about the rich. Woe to you who are rich, because basically you won't have anything. But you who are poor, you will. Well, Jesus' word cuts that up, doesn't it? You know, I'm not rich, so I don't read it that way. I'm, I, I spent the last two and a half years uh, living sacrificially, not earning much. So I read the poor bit. Do you see what I mean? It, it speaks to us where we are at, but it also speaks to us spiritually. So sometimes I think, well, let's not get too caught up in this. Because, you know, if I was uh, um, fed really well, and there's people who are hungry, I could go, well, you know, I just live in this world, and we've got this abundance, and we've got Tesco. It doesn't, Jesus isn't talking to me now. Yet, I still get my three meals a day and some cheeky snacks when my wife isn't looking. But there are people out there who don't. And I can turn this into a, a spiritual thing. 
well, Jesus doesn't really mean that. Yes, context has changed. Back then, there were more people who were poor than rich, but it needs to challenge us today, whether spiritually or physically. It has to. Jesus' word cuts to the core of our soul and let it challenge us. But it also gives us perspective from a bit spiritual point of view. We're exiles, aren't we? Everyone's in exile. We, we, we too often forget this. And, and I think Jesus is really trying to remind us of this. We were in the Garden of Eden of God. We will one day go back to be with God. But at the moment, we are outside of God. And when you are outside of the kingdom of heaven, living in this kingdom of earth, the principality of the devil, we can get caught up in those things. So Jesus is saying, you know, woe to you who are rich, you who are well fed, uh, you who have so much fun and don't mourn, you who everyone speaks well of you. That's been living by the world standards, isn't it? It's, it's you're aligning to what that is. Now, I always say it doesn't, don't please don't think that you're not supposed to be rich because some people have got those gifts for being rich, haven't they? I hope I've not got a gift for earning money or, or I've got a gift for spending money, but I've got a gift for earning money and changing people's lives. But there are people out there, good Christians, who can take 10 pounds and make it into 100,000 pounds and they can change people's lives through that. But it's where is their hearts? Are you aligned with God and the kingdom of God? Or do you get your fulfillment from the world? So when people uh, call you, ah, oh, you're rich. Well, I can have 10 million pounds in the bank, but I'm not rich because none of it is mine. Do you understand? It's God's. He's entrusted this to me that I might go and help other people. So even if you have 10 million pounds in the bank, blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God because that's where you're, you're heading. You're using your uh, your gifts and your talents to make money, but you give it away to help those who are in need. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. I think this is a challenging one, and I think these are all challenging. We, we tend to live in this world where we, uh, it's, it's a good, happy place, isn't it? The world's a, a happy place where bad things happen. But actually, the world's broken and we are exiles. We're away from God. And God tells us in Genesis that this is a tough world, that you have to break the soil, you have to toil just to grow your food. And we live in a broken world where we make good things happen, where we pray God's kingdom will come on earth as it is in heaven, that good things can happen. That not the world is perfect, not the world is absolutely great and then something comes along and rocks us. But actually the world is broken and as Christians we take these blessings and we try and change people's uh, worlds. We try to change people's situations that we too may be blessed. That we live in a, in a, spiritually in a way that we don't see ourselves as anything more than anyone else. And I think this is a, a real challenge for us today, especially in a, in a time of such abundance. The world uh, has so many rich people, uh, uh, only a few people actually can control financial markets, and we've seen that in the uh, coronavirus crisis, where the, Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon, can make 10 billion, billion pounds in one day. 10 billion in one day. If you want a perspective in seconds, if a million pounds in seconds, uh, it's about, I think it's about 11 seconds or 22 seconds, something like that. A million pounds is at 22 seconds. A billion is 32 minutes. We can lose the value. So he's got 10 billion in one day. Wow, it's just, but Jesus is challenging us as Christians not to be seen or to control the world. Could you imagine those few people who can control everything who did it if they were Christians, who if they took this, the blessings and the words, where is your heart at? How that would change. But that's deflecting to rich people, isn't it, normally? 
What about us today? What about us here? What about where we sit? Are you poor in spirit? Do you hunger now? Do you freely give to those whom others don't have? Remember when Jesus speaks to the rich young ruler and he says, I've done all these great things you have commanded me throughout all time. And Jesus says, go give everything to the poor. And he can't do it because his heart's not there. But um, I think it's Woodbine Willie from uh, World War One before he got famous going out to, to, the, um, to the war. Um, I remember there's a story of him carrying his bed uh, down the street uh, to give to somebody because they didn't have that. So these blessings and woes are both a physical and a spiritual. It's not how we look to live our life on the outside, but Jesus really cuts to the inside. It's not about giving all your money away, all your food away. I don't think God wants to, to live in actual poverty. God loves us and he provides for us and he knows our needs. But we need to also know the needs of others and where we need to sacrifice, where we need to give away, where we need to help those who are in uh, difficult situations, whether they've lost someone, whether they are in need of food. It is that we give the kingdom of God to them. It's the kingdom of God we're giving. It's not money. It's not time. It's not anything. It's God's love that we give. That they may know to come and to know God himself. That they may give to each other. I said to someone this week, it's the best pyramid scheme that I've ever heard of in my life. That you invite others to come and all they do is give away to have others to come. So this week just read these words read these blessings and these words and let god speak to each of you to where you are and where your heart is he knows best and let those words challenge you and pray to god that they may do and i will do the same as well amen amen well, as we continue to reflect on those words our next hymn as we stand to sing just reminds us that jesus is here to bless us his spirit is among us to bring healing and to bring comfort and to bring forgiveness. And this lovely hymn, Beauty for Brokenness. What a wonderful thought, isn't it? He wants to restore us into the beautiful people that he wants us to be. Said, your kingdom increase Shelter for fragile lives Cure for their ills Work for the craftsmen Trade for their skills Land for the dispossessed Rights for the weak Voices to plead the cause of those who can't speak. God of the poor, friend of the weak, give us compassion, we pray. Melt our cold hearts, the tears fall like rain. Come change our love from a spark. Refuge from cruel wars, havens from fear, cities for sanctuary, freedoms to share, peace to the killing fields, scorched earth to green, Christ for the bitterness. 
His cross for the pain God of the poor Friend of the weak Give us compassion we pray Melt our cold hearts Let tears fall like rain Come change our love From a spark to a flame Earth, oceans and streams Plundered and poisoned A future and dreams Lord, in our madness Carelessness, greed Make us content with The things that we need God of the poor Friend of the weak Compassion we pray Melt our cold hearts The tears fall like rain Come change our love From a spark to a flame Lighten our darkness Breathe on this flame Till your justice burns brightly again Until the nations learn of your ways Seek your salvation and bring you their praise God of the poor, friend of the weak Give us compassion church leaders, pray for all those who are teachers of the faith, teachers of your holy word. Pray that you would continue to bless and encourage them in their ministry, especially in this benefice and in this parish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are involved in building the community of faith, that their light may shine for all to see. 
pray for our young people, pray for our children in our local school here, as they come to the end of this part of the half term. Lord, we pray that they may be inspired to build and live in a world that cares especially for those who are weak and vulnerable. Pray that they may have hearts of compassion and care for others. We ask that you would bless them as they seek to learn. Help them to come through this difficult time and restore, we pray, the days that have been lost to them through this coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. we pray for those who are sick, pray that they may experience your presence, your compassion, to bring your healing and your love and your support. In a brief moment of silence, we name those whom we know and are on our hearts. We pray for both of our church wardens today as they are caring for or grieving for their loved ones. We pray that you would bring your comfort and your peace to them. to your loving care, all those whom we've named this morning, our families and those whom we love, we commend for, to your care and protection. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. And Lord, we pray finally for peace in your world. Pray that we too may be peacemakers wherever we are, whatever resources we have at our disposal. But we especially pray today that you would change the hearts and minds of our world leaders. Turn their minds upside down, we pray, to see the joy and the liberty of a world in peace. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> well, when Jesus came and stood among his disciples in his resurrected body, he stood amongst them and he said, Peace be with you. They were glad when they saw the Lord. So let us, as we remain seated, just offer to one another a sign of peace. Peace, 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 peace. Yeah. Our church and family news. I was just looking around and it looks like it's going to be today. So uh, it's really lovely to have you. Uh, with us in church and um, sadly the live stream isn't working so um, anyone at home that watches what I edit together this afternoon we're really sorry that's all I can say and uh, we will try and work on it please pray for BT working around the village I think and uh, it's not worked since they had faffed around so uh, please pray for our broadband in the church uh, that would be great um, so Dan on behalf of everyone here it's so lovely to uh, you are at 10 o'clock, I know you've done 8 o'clock, um, but we look forward to uh, Dan joining us uh, over the coming months and, and indeed years, um, which will be lovely. Um, the pew sheet was emailed out at the end of January, so if you are looking for that, um, please do um, find all the information out about what's happening in February. 
Um, please do also pray for the PCC who meet a week tomorrow. Um, lots of um, exciting things um, to discuss, so please keep the PCC in your prayers. And then I think I just remembered that it's somebody's last Sunday here today. Am I right in thinking, Jenny? Mm -hmm. Is today your last Sunday with us? Yes. It is. Jenny, you have been amazing. I'm aware that you have served in so many different ways in our church over many, many years. Um, I think you've been deputy church warden, lots of seen things, but also lots of unseen things. Um, so it is with you. It's all been a joy. Oh, well, it's been a joy to have you as part of our, our community. And the joy of being part of God's family is that whilst you might not physically be here, with us, um, I hope that you'll find uh, a church and a community, is it Devon you're moving to? Yeah. Um, where you will be uh, loved and cared for and uh, when the live stream uh, works again you're always, always and committed just to worship. Yes, <laughs> yeah very much, very much so Jenny, um, on behalf of everybody, a huge thank you, thank you. for everything. Um, <laughs> embarrassed Jenny but I would like to say a blessing so that you go away with God's peace and with our love and this is often known as the Aaron blessing a very special blessing which carries and I think you will share with me in this may the Lord bless you and keep you may the Lord be gracious unto you May he lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. We now stand to sing our closing hymn, Lord Jesus Christ.
with a blessing. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Christ Jesus our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. So go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.